From shady CIA experiments conducted in the 50s all the way to the kidnapping of a Soviet satellite and the infamous Operation Paperclip. These declassified documents definitely showed the world a different side of the government. Let's talk about it as we dive into the top 10 declassified documents the government wish you never knew about. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have Operation Midnight Climax. This experiment took place in the 1950s and it was one of those mind control research projects that was sponsored by the CIA. This was actually just one experiment that was a part of Project MK Ultra. So basically they wanted to study the effects of LSD, but instead of finding willing participants, which let's be honest, probably wouldn't have been that difficult, instead they used non-consenting people who were lured to safe houses by sex workers who were being paid by the CIA, and then once at these safe houses they were slipped the drug and monitored from behind a one-way glass. For over a decade, the project gave the government more knowledge about the drug itself and what it does to the mind. It gave the knowledge about surveillance technology and even sexual blackmail. In the end, the project was shut down in 1965, but people don't forget and the damage was already done. In our number 9 spot today, we have Operation Wash Tub. This operation came to light in 2014 when documents became declassified and more people could learn about this Cold War era operation. Basically, this was a covert mission that had its sights set on Alaska. The plan detailed the training of different people who lived in Alaska. Like we're talking just ordinary residents. They wanted to train these people to both code and decode and a few other different spying tactics which would have been so cool. I mean, I would have wanted to be picked so badly. Not that I would have even known it was happening, but you get what I mean. Basically the plan was put in place in case the Soviet Union was to invade Alaska. Then these unsuspecting ordinary citizens would use their newly learned espionage techniques to get all the intel they could and secretly relay that information to high ranking US officials. As we now know, of course, this invasion never occurred, so the contingency plan wasn't needed, but there were 89 lucky temporary agents who were trained just for this purpose, and I have never been more jealous in my entire life. In our number 8 spot today, we have Project Minaret. This is a document that became declassified in 2013 as a part of the National Security Archives efforts. This historical document describes a sort of watch list of prominent Americans who were critical of the Vietnam War. The document explains that their overseas communications were tapped and listened into by the government from 1967 to 1973 and a quote from the document reads quote President Johnson wanted to know if the domestic anti-war movement was receiving help from abroad. The project expanded so much that it went on to include more than 1600 people including civil rights leaders like Martin Luther King Jr, Whitney Young and Muhammad Ali. There were also people like Democratic US Senator Frank Church of Idaho, Republican Senator Howard Baker of Tennessee, a New York Times columnist and a Washington Post columnist. The surveillance began under President Johnson, but it continued on through to the Nixon administration. In the end, the only reason it was stopped was because Attorney General Elliot Richardson was concerned about its very doubtful and murky legality and decided that during the Watergate scandal that it probably would just be best to shut it down. I mean, they definitely had enough on their plate already at the time. In our number 7 spot today, we have Project Iceworm. This secret mission took place in the 1960s and it was basically intended to build a series of mobile nuclear missile launch sites under the Greenland ice sheet because this would then house medium range missiles close enough that they would be able to strike targets within the Soviet Union. This project was called Project Ice Worm, but there was another project called Camp Century. Basically Camp Century was to test out Project Ice Worm and see how likely it would be and how feasible it would be. So engineers went to work and created a network of underground tunnels and buildings that included places to stay a kitchen, a hall for hanging out, there were supply rooms, and even a communication center and a nuclear power plant. This was all kept as a super secret for a long time and was even kept from the Danish government for seven years. In 1966, however, the project was cancelled because of the shifting ice. This created unstable conditions for the underground tunnels that are most likely crushed now, but still remain beneath the Arctic. In our number six spot today, we have the Pentagon crash. We have all heard about the devastating September 11th, 2001 attacks, but some of you might not know that on the day, there were actually four separate coordinated attacks, all a part of
of the same plan, and one of those attacks was on the Pentagon. There was a photo that was previously classified, but eventually has been released by the US government, and it shows the absolute devastation that was done by the commercial plane that crashed into the Pentagon. The plane was able to tear through all five rings that existed in the building. All of the people on board the plane that day, as well as 125 people that were in the building at the time, passed away in this horrible event. For obvious reasons, the initial photos of the Pentagon damage were withheld from the public or from circulating in the media, but now that they have been released, it just shows us all another side to that horrible, terrifying day. In our number 5 spot today, we have the UFO report. This photo is of a previously classified document from 1963. Although the document still has a lot of information that has been blacked out, the document is the description and report of an unidentified flying object or UFO encounter. This is said to have taken place over the desert of Nevada, and the report was written in detail in order to have a written record of the event. This document is said to be the authentic report from the FBI, which is exactly why some of the details have still been omitted, despite it being declassified. This might seem like less of a big deal now, as in this day and age, we have declassified video footage of similar kinds of encounters, but for 1963, this was huge. As discussions of alien or extraterrestrial life is a big part of our modern society, this document shows that these things have been on our minds for many, many years now. In our number 4 spot today, we have Project 1794. This project was created with the goal to build a sort of saucer type aircraft that would be designed to shoot down Soviet bombers. The program, which was created in the 1950s, was quite ambitious and had some pretty lofty goals. A team of engineers began trying to build a disc shaped aircraft, but here's the real kicker they wanted it to be capable of traveling at supersonic speeds at high altitudes. The documents about this project show that they wanted it to be able to travel at Mach 4, which is four times the speed of sound, and they wanted it to be able to reach an altitude of over 100,000 feet. At the time, the project was estimated to cost about $3 million, which is about $26 million today. In the end, the project was cancelled in 1961 because the craft failed tests and proved to be aerodynamically unstable, which of course would provide a whole slew of problems at high speeds, especially supersonic ones. In our number 3 spot today, we have the Manned Orbiting Laboratory. So for this one, this is a mission that was created in response to a Soviet Union secret mission called ALMAZ. Basically this program, called the Manned Orbiting Laboratory, was run by the Air Force and the Intelligence Community's National Reconnaissance Office, and the goal of it was to spy on and throw the Soviet Union off track in space. Some of the documents in this mission have now been declassified, and according to them, one of the goals was to knock some of Moscow's satellites out of orbit or to fire projectiles at them. They even wanted to try and capture one of the Soviet satellites in space and then basically send it back down to Earth so that they could study it. That's so wild. And because of this, Moscow equipped their secret space station with a rapid fire cannon in order to stop any of this from happening. I seriously feel like I'm watching some sort of space action movie right now. I can't believe that these are real things that happened and they were created in the 60s and 70s. In our number 2 spot today, we have the Lunik kidnapping. Don't worry, Lunik is not a person and instead is a Soviet lunar satellite that was kidnapped just for one night. This project honestly sounds like it was taken straight from a movie and it has to do with the great space race. In the early 1960s, the Soviet Union wanted to make it as clear as possible that they were winning the race to space, so they launched a multinational exhibition of their Lunik satellites, which became the first spacecraft to impact the moon's surface. And when the Luna 3 returned, it brought with it the first ever pictures of the moon's far side. It was a big deal, and it's safe to say that the US wanted to know everything that they could about it. Of course, the satellite was heavily guarded, but it was trapped Traveling from city to city for this exhibition, so undercover CIA agents went to work. Basically, they convinced the man who drove the transport truck to get some rest at a nearby hotel, and basically they would look after it for him while he rested. I'm sure it was a bit more complicated than this, but you get the gist. From here, the agents then took apart and photographed every single component of the thing before putting it back together and placing it back in the truck for its next tour date. There is no indication that before the operation became declassified that anyone outside of those involved knew what had happened that day. And I'm not gonna lie, this is a pretty hilarious plan and the fact that it worked is both shocking and 
pretty impressive. In our number one spot today, we have Operation Paperclip. This operation began in 1946 when the President of the United States at the time, Harry Truman, authorized it. Basically, the entire point of it was to lure scientists from Nazi Germany over to the United States after the Second World War. This was done in an effort to aid the country in their post war efforts, as well as to ensure that the valuable knowledge these people had would not end up in the hands of perhaps the Soviet Union or either side of the divided East and West Germany. Had it not been classified information at the time, this would have of course been highly controversial as many of these people were involved in, and sometimes even leaders of that hateful party. Former President Truman stood by his decision, saying that because of the relations with the Soviet Union, quote, this had to be done and was done. Several of the scientists a part of this program were later investigated because of their former ties, but one was only ever tried out of the over 1600. None of the paperclip scientists were ever found guilty for any crimes either in the United States or in Germany. Perhaps the most famous of all of the paperclip scientists was Werner von Braun, who played a huge role in advancing NASA's Apollo missions. All right, guys, that has been our list for today. Thanks so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I will see you all next time. Goodbye.